All right, so I'm here with um, with Jeff, uh, and, and I, usually I don't mention that, but I will I will have to in this case because uh, it's actually the second take of the of this interview, <laughs> so pro the intros are going to be even better um, because I realize what happens now and then that I didn't re press on the record button. So anyway, shit happens. And by the way, I have a funny story. I interviewed was. Um, oh yeah. Uh, like three years ago, and when I came back at home, half of the content was like uh, <coughs> because of a cable. So this is <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I bought. Anyway, Jeff, um, you need some introduction not to the developer community, but to some others. Um, you are behind a very cool uh, blog uh, at iphonedevelopmentalblogspot.com. That is my blog. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you post uh, a bunch of code, like pretty pretty much not every day, but pretty much every week. Uh, it's not every day. I do try to do something every week. Uh, I don't always succeed. I also, you know, but sort of if you average it out, uh, it probably comes up to uh, to at least once a week. Yeah. And um, give us a little bit of your background because a lot of people know you as the iPhone developer and, and author. And, and but before that, you've done a bunch of different things. <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of uh, I've had sort of what you would call an unusual career path. Um, you know, I've, I've been programming on a hobby level since uh, like 1980. I started with the Apple IIs and uh, and then switched over to the Mac in the make Ma in the late 80s, uh, and then uh, it was sort of just something I did. But it was sort of a, an obsession at times, taking an awful lot of my time. Uh, but I sort of went to school for a completely different things. So uh, I ended up. Uh, you know, 1995 with a with a law degree I didn't want to use, <laughs> which uh, law degree, yeah. Uh, and uh, so very quickly, I uh, passed the bar in January, and by February I was done, um, and uh, sort of wandered around for a while, not sure what to do. Still programming as a hobby, but I just didn't think I'd be able to find a job because I had nothing on my resume. Now you can go in and say I've been doing it for 20 years, and they say, well, what have you done? It's like, well, it's yeah, I'm a bunch of stuff on my hard drive, a couple open source projects, you know. So I was just sort of written off ever getting uh, getting a job. And uh, in the late 90s, uh, my wife got a job in uh, Silicon Valley. And we were out there, and with the dot-com explosion, there was such a shortage of talent that there were companies willing to to give people with sort of inappropriate backgrounds a chance. Uh, and I got a job at a company called PeopleSoft as a developer, and then it was sort of all from there. I worked at PeopleSoft for about four years, uh, and had planned to stay. I'm glad I didn't because they were bought by Oracle, um, uh, and uh, wasn't necessarily someplace I'd want to be after Oracle bought them. But uh, just through a sort of unusual circumstances, uh, I ended up having to leave the company. Um, and uh, we went back east, and I started consulting. So I was doing uh, enterprise cons consulting at first, PeopleSoft, and then you know branching into other things, and uh, sort of still doing Mac development, some Mac open source projects. I started writing for Mac Tech Magazine, uh, and at one time I actually started writing a Cocoa book. Uh, and uh, the book will be coming out with my name on it, but it's got almost none of my content now. It'll be Learn Cocoa, uh, by, uh, mostly by a guy named Jack Nutting, uh, uh, pretty soon. But we started it uh, back in 2005, me and Dave again, uh, or 2004, I don't know. But uh, Tiger came out, and so many things changed, bindings and all that stuff, that we basically scrapped it. And uh, so then I was on like a two-year project, uh, long-term uh, project and I just as I was rolling off of that that long project, uh, the iPhone SDK was announced, and I sort of looked at it and I said, you know, here's my chance. You know, I I I, I was on uh, doing a project for such a long period of time that I can afford to take some time off, and uh, so I decided that I was going to. So I called Dave, my co-author, and uh, you know, within within a week, maybe maybe a week and a half, we had the contract with Apress to do the book, uh, and uh, and I started the blog, and uh, that's sort of. Where, how we got there. It's pretty cool. A lot of people know you with your book, uh, uh, your books, because you you wrote um, um, more than one book about iPhone development, right? Uh, well, yeah. There was uh, beginning iPhone development, which was the original book uh, that was written when it was still under NDA, um, and uh, that went on, and it it uh, it actually really took off. Uh, and part of it was by taking the chance and having it ready when the NDA dropped. We were uh, we were the second book to market, but we were the first one that was targeted at the beginner. Uh, and uh, we were really for a long time the only one targeted at beginner. And so we really uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot of people buying the book, and then we got a lot of very positive feedback. Uh, people were giving us really nice Amazon reviews and recommending us to our friends. And it sort of really took off in the way that a, a programming book doesn't. So then we revised the book when 3.0 came out, but uh, 
we didn't want to put new material in. Uh, the thinking that Dave and I had was that we didn't want people to have to rebuy the book to get the new 3.0 specific material. So we just updated everything so it worked with 3.0. We got rid of using deprecated methods, things like that. And then we started the second book, which just came out in December, which has um, 3.0 specific stuff and uh, some more advanced stuff that we just didn't think was appropriate for a beginner book like concurrency and networking. So this this second book is actually uh, second book is actually pretty recent. Yeah, it came out at the end of December. Although most people haven't been able to get it until recently, there was a uh, an inventory problem at Amazon. It, it 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 was sent there, but it didn't actually show up in in inventory until not too long ago. And I don't know the details of why you know what happened or why, but uh, it uh, it was it was sent to the it was sent out of the the printing factory at the end of December. But uh, most people weren't able to actually buy it until a couple weeks ago. So that would explain why I discovered it today. <laughs> uh, that probably would be either that or a lack of, uh, of good marketing on our part. But uh, it's very interesting because in this book you have some sample code uh, which you talked about just recently at the NS conference. About um, about the game kit things. Yeah, that was my, my final com my final conference session. Uh, which uh, which I just did uh, was uh, was on GameKit and online play and uh, and uh, it was uh, a lot of the a lot of the code was uh, taken from from the book um, mostly just as a uh, a time saving factor because I had done I already did I did two sort of original presentations and I just you know as a as a a time issue I just didn't have the time to do a third or completely original one so yeah it was it was mostly code from the book um, along with explanations. Obviously, a lot of people here attending the conference has taken some things from you and some tips and tricks. But what what do you what do you have learned about uh, over giving those three sessions, and what do you take you back home? Uh, well, uh, I've learned uh, a lot of things. Uh, a lo well, learned uh, so much as uh, reaffirmed a lot of things. You know, I. I uh, Sort of really reaffirmed uh, my feelings about this community. It's a, it's just a it's a wonderful community. Um, the uh, unfortunately, I, I spent so much time uh, working on the presentations while I was here because I I didn't plan ahead all that well that uh, I didn't get to, to go into another, some of the sessions. But I learned that uh, some of the uh, some of the people that were here are phenomenal speakers. Uh, you know, uh, always like watching Mike Lee, but uh, Drew McCormick, I'd never seen him speak, and he was he was phenomenal. I wish I could have watched all of his his sessions. Um, you know, but pretty much everybody did did a great job, and uh, and uh, I, that my sort of one regret is that I wasn't able to go and watch all of every session because I had to work on mine. Uh, but the, there's some satisfaction in knowing that I'll get to see them in Atlanta. <laughs> And um, over over Europe generally, or or, or, or London here, uh, what do you feel as a known programmer? What I mean, aside the the very good beer, uh, what do you take back home? Uh, just from you, the UK in general, for Europe in general, or uh, what am I taking home? Uh, a fair what do you like? Beer? Oh, I I uh, I like the people, uh, and I can't really uh, say much more than that, except for uh, there's a pub about four kilometers up the road that we went to. But other than that, I really haven't left the uh, the conference center. Uh, it's it's quite a nice conference center. I've enjoyed myself, but um, I've really been squirreled away here, either uh, either working, presenting, or here in the bar talking with people. So uh, you know, the only thing I can really comment is on the people. But they've they, you know, I've just met uh, a tremendous number of really great people. I've had a great time. It's actually too bad that we are again in an NDA thingy with the iPad, because yes. I cannot ask you a specific question about that. But other than that, what um, what are you excited about uh, about the future? And I, mean, I mean, generally also about the iPad thingies. Well, the iPad. I mean, I think it's it's interesting seeing all the negative uh, comments out there um, because it's you know, my first reaction is this is not really uh, a product that's targeted at me. It would never be my main device. Um, as a developer, I want one because it, it looks like it's a lot of promise. But there are a lot of people, you know, uh, Steve Jobs is right, you know, a lot of people, the computer is really an obstacle to them doing things like email and, and uh, getting online and doing, browsing the web and playing a few games. And, you know, I mean, I think about my mom, excuse me, you know, my mom 
doesn't really fully grok the concept of a desktop computer having to empty the trash, having to quit applications, and 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 it frustrates her. You know, she wants to get on because she likes to be able to email her kid, her grandkids, and 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 you know, she wants to be part of that online community, but she's not comfortable with technology. And there are, are less extreme cases, obviously, but you know, for a lot of people, for people who aren't like us, aren't geeks, who don't enjoy the the the, the, the complex and difficult aspects of it, you know, it's it's a great opportunity. Uh, there's also lots of huge opportunities in, in tons of vertical markets where an inexpensive uh, device could replace all sorts of, of either specialized equipment or manualized man, manual ways of doing things. So I think there are huge opportunities for uh, Objective C programmers. Probably uh, probably the brightest point in time since since the heyday of Next. Uh, so I, I think it's it's great. I mean, it's you know I, I'll probably get one just because the price is you know well obviously if I weren't a developer I mean I would I would probably still get one just gonna be a great video player for the plane or you know um, but uh, uh, you know I, I think a lot of people will buy them as secondary devices for that purpose. But I think there's a lot of people who it can replace the computer for or be their first computer. And I, I think there's a huge amount of potential and I'm really excited about it. I think it's a great platform. For us as developers, it's obviously a second golden rush. Yeah, well, it's a second gold rush, and we don't really have to relearn because it's the same SDK. There's some new things. The hardware is a little different. They've added some stuff to accommodate it, but the learning curve is, you know, there instead of what we had to face the first time. Even as Mac programmers, and you know, way smaller than what people coming from other platforms uh, first experience. So, you know, it's a uh, from our point of view, it's it's a tiny little step, uh, but for the consumers, I think it's a huge step. And so, I I I think it's a great thing. So thank you for the talk. I would love to speak two hours with you, but then I will have to spend three days in iMovie. <laughs> so see you soon. See you very soon. Absolutely. Are you coming over to Atlanta? I, I'm not, but uh, we, we'll see us uh, most probably at the WWDC. Uh, most likely. Uh, it's, I always plan to go. It's my favorite week of the year. Um, sorry, Scotty. Uh, second. second. So, sorry, wife. <laughs> She won't want this. Um, Yeah. yeah, but it's it's uh, it's great, and I'll see you if if not before at WWDC. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.